So, it's February 15th, the day after Valentine's Day. Lonnie, what did you do for your wife last night? Oh, Tony, I had a custom-made pizza made in the shape of a heart. Mama <laughs> Mia! How did you know? How did now, you know? How did she respond to that? Oh, she got all teary-eyed and kind of ran out of the room. That's why we got extra pizza today. I, I don't know what to say. Tony, your night had to be better than that. You know, I thought so, too. It started out really, really good. What I did, I had this romantic dinner. I had the Granite Ridge wine already. I had pasta special sauce. I made her her favorite spaghetti. Everything, and even jalapeno olives. And it all. Everything was going good. And then I made this unbelievable cake. Kind of a wow. Mm, yeah, I put some things on top. And then I thought the dessert was even better than that. I gave her the last thing, and it didn't go so well. What'd you give her? Well, I gave her my favorite thing in life, and that's beef jerky milk chocolate. Oh, it has to be healthy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Elizabeth, please tell me your night was better than that. It was horrible. I sat in the parking lot at Menards waiting on my husband while he went shopping. What's wrong with that? That makes sense. Why? That's good. <laughs> Izzy, can, can you bring life back to us here? My choice of flowers didn't go over so well, mm. but at least I didn't have to sleep on the couch. That's a bonus for you. I think they're pretty, Izzy. L Luke, can you and Kayla save this? I think I got it right this year. We've been talking about how amazing this Next Step House is, mm -hmm. so I brought my beautiful wife, Kayla, to the Next Step House. I made her a delicious meal on the oh. induction cooktop. Ooh. We had a candlelight dinner, then we finished the night watching a movie underneath the stars in the Ooh. theater room. Well done. Oh. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Short. Anybody smell anything burning? Wait, that's my cake. Ooh. Hey, would you just get it out there? Yeah. Thanks. Ooh, 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 ooh. I smell, I smell toast. I smell toast. Oh, wow. Hey, welcome to Between the Studs. I'm Lonnie, and this is Tony, and this is Luke. And we are part of Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving northern Indiana, northwest Ohio, and parts of southern Michigan. We have a showroom in Fort Wayne and also in Goshen, and we would like to invite you to come in. We'd like to talk to you about a custom home on your lot or one of ours. Each week on Between the Studs, we want to we want to follow processes and talk about innovations, energy efficiencies, and trends that characterize today's new home. There's a lot to talk about. We're glad you've joined us today. Tony, what are we going to do today? You know, I want to welcome everybody back. We're over here on uh, Flutter Road, and this is our next step house of technology. So obviously we talk about a lot of things. But before we start, I would like to do this. Lonnie, you know a lot about the history of Valentine's Day. Now, this is the 15th, but mm -hmm. December or February the 14th. Could you tell us a little bit about the history of Valentine's Day? Well, there's a lot of theories that go into making up Valentine's Day. The, the, probably the most popular theory is based on Claudius the Emperor. And he lived in the 5th century, and he was a Christian. And during Roman days, he opted to marry Roman soldiers. The Romans said no, because they thought the single soldiers would fight better than the married ones. But he married them because it was a sacrament, and he also ministered to Christians. Consequently, he lost his life. He was executed. It's said that he actually wrote a love letter to Claudius's um, jailer's daughter, who befriended Valentine. And in the letter he said, or he ended it with, your Valentine. Huh. That's how it started then. We think so. Interesting. Okay, today, what we'd like to do, since Luke, you spent your night last night cooking over at this Next Step house, and this is probably one of the most technologically advanced kitchens, at least in our area. Yeah. So what I thought we'd do today, why don't we spend our first segment talking about all the different types of appliances, and maybe show us a little bit about what you did with that chocolate. Yeah. How's that? Absolutely. Great. This episode we talked about heating things up. We're going to start talking about the kitchen appliances and we're going to talk about this induction cooktop. 
Now, I'm going to be a gourmet chef here, uh, Luke, but I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do cooking with the pan that's cut in half. I'm glad you asked. We cut this pan in half to show why this cooktop is so special. Like I said, this is called an induction cooktop. Kayla, can you hand me that chocolate? Izzy, you always seem to have a lot of money on you. Do you have any money? I think I have some change. Where did you get a $100 bill? <laughs> My wife takes care of me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm going to put the chocolate bar on there, and you can see that the chocolate bar is half on the burner and half on the pan. I'm going to slide this $100 oh, bill. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is my wife's $100 bill remember that? Let's not... Uh... I promise, you, you'll get it back. It'll be all right. So the induction cooktop, the way it works is underneath each burner, there is a coil of uh, copper underneath each one. And when we pass electricity through it, it actually creates a magnetic field. So when that magnetic field reacts with the stainless steel pan, it actually then excites the elements in the pan which then creates vibration, which then in turn creates heat. So the burner itself is not the heat source. It's the pan that's the heat source. So it's a lot more efficient way of cooking because the heat goes directly from the pan to the food rather than from the burner to the pan, then the food. It's also safer. If I pick this up, I can actually put my hand right here. It's a little warm to the touch from some residual heat. Now, if I touch the pan, that will burn me. Yeah. So if kids came across here and started messing with the, with the uh, dials, if they accidentally turned it on, it actually will not generate any heat unless there's a pan on the top itself. That makes it a lot safer. Yeah. It's also only two inches deep. So ADA accessible, if we wanted to, we could have this all hollowed out. Somebody could roll their wheelchair right up to it and cook right on it. And they could actually use this as a working station and not worry about getting burned because it's only when the pan is on it and the pan's gonna be what's hot, nothing else. Speaking of ADA, we also have a microwave drawer that is a lot safer and easier to access because you never have to lift anything hot over your head or reach over a burner to access it. Let's go check that out. That, I don't think that was yours. Oh yeah, here you go, Izzy. here's your hundred dollars. Gotta make mama happy. <laughs> so here's the microwave drawer. So you can take the hot food or the hot water right from the drawer to the countertop, extremely safe. Great. Uh, I was messing with the chocolate over here, Luke. Oh. I need to wash my hands. I'm sorry. Hey, how'd you turn that on? Uh, it's actually one of my favorite features of this little kitchen is just the touch faucet. So all you have to do is just simply touch it and it'll turn on or off. Oh, that's convenient. Another thing that's really wonderful about this sink is actually that it's got a 1.1 horsepower garbage disposal. What's an average one actually? Uh, you know, in typical homes, it's gonna be about a third to a half horsepower. Yeah, I knew it was stronger. So it's actually almost two times the normal horsepower then. And I think with that, we can actually bid adieu to my poor choice of yeah, flowers here. Trying to get rid of those. And with that. It's like really quiet for a oh, 1.1 yeah. horsepower. And it's got an auto reverse feature as well. So if it does get stuck, it automatically detects it and turns it in reverse to try to unstick itself. Yeah, so no need to get underneath the sink and turn that wrench. No need in losing a finger. Absolutely. I forgot to clean up some of my glasses from last night. Can you tell me what makes the dishwasher unique? Well, what makes this dishwasher really unique is just the fact that it, are you serious? <laughs> it's disgusting. I don't wanna waste it. Well, what it does really well is it cleans out the wine glasses. Uh, basically, no thanks, I'll pass. Oh, it actually shoots a jet right into the bottle of the bottom of the wine glass. I mean, a lot of times people have special brushes or things like that to make sure they can clean out that bottom spot. These jets are guaranteed to hit the bottom of the wine glass, get it nice and clean. So it comes in really handy for baby bottles as well. A lot of couples will find that very handy come November. Oh, uh, yeah. Perfect. Nine months from now. Yep. The last thing we want to talk about for heating things up in the kitchen is the convection wall oven. And I know I do most of the cooking, but we're going to let Kayla tell us about that one. Well, I don't know if you do most of the cooking in our house, but when it comes time for the good cooking, I'll use this oven right here. So this double oven is uh, convection. Convection is something that it'll heat the food up quicker because it uses a fan and blows all that warm air around, which is a lot more efficient. And uh, the great thing about it is that you can press this remote enable button right here and I can control it from work. So could I actually like preheat it before I get home? You could, definitely. Well, I think I'm done talking to you guys up here in the kitchen. I'm going to head down with Elizabeth and we're going to talk about heating things up with fireplaces. Noisy, I think I got some wine left over. You want to go find out? That's good. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Jake Whitaker with Granite Ridge Builders, and I'm here today to talk to you about a brand new community called Saddle Creek Estates. Saddle Creek Estates is located in Grable, Indiana, and it's in the Leo School District, and the streets are actually in for Section 1 right now, so please come out and see us. Now, there's been a little bit of confusion when people are driving out there. Um, there is an existing house that was originally there, and I'm kind of working out of that right now. I'm out there every Sunday from 1 to 4, or give me a call and I'll meet you out there anytime. Did I mention it was Leo Schools? Well, this is the time of year where it seems like we take a lot of phone calls at Granite Ridge Builders about building in the country. We do. We probably build 40 to 50 homes in the country each year, and so we've been through a lot of different challenges. I would say opportunities uh, to do that, that very thing. Is there, a, is there one specific topic that comes up a lot when building in the country? I would say, JR, it would be septic systems. Now, it does vary from county to county, and some counties are more friendly to that concept than others, but in Allen County particularly, it's a huge thing to consider. Are there some different types of septic systems that are available today? There are. There are in-ground systems, which are rare in our clay. Then there are also above-ground systems, Presby systems, which is a relatively new concept that's working well, and then also mound systems. When people are trying to budget for building in the country, can you give a general cost with some of these systems? Typically, septic systems in our area are going to range anywhere from seven or 8000 up to fifteen, sixteen, or even 17000 The type of soil and the number of bedrooms dictates that. So if some folks have questions for Granite Ridge and want to get started, how do they get a hold of us? They can call us. You know, we developed a checklist for building in the country, and we provide these services at no charge. We'd be glad to meet with the customer and go over that checklist to make sure they get off on a good foot. Granite Ridge Builders invites you to 11031 Crest Road, located in southwest Fort Wayne. This home features four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. The home sits on over one acre, features an outbuilding, full unfinished basement, ceramic tile shower, coffered ceiling, granite countertops, and beautiful trimscaping. This home is available for sale and is offered at $429.9. Visit us at 9825 Chapman's Boulevard. This ranch style home features three bedrooms on the main level, quartz countertops, ceramic tile backsplash, three car garage, beautiful sunroom with a wet bar, unfinished basement, and this home is located on a 17 acre Douglas Lake. This home also offers a covered rear patio with a built in fireplace. Again, visit us in Chapman's Bridge at 9825 Chapman's Boulevard. This home is priced at $329.9. Elizabeth, before we start talking about heating things up with fireplaces, you have a little bit of trivia for me. I do. Now, curfew, we've all heard of that term or had a curfew. Uh, back in medieval England, they had what they called a curfew bell. So about 8 o'clock every night, that bell would ring, and that was a sign to come in and go to bed. And at that point, you would put your fire out. Really? Well, we can't put the fire out in the traditional manner with this one here, considering it's electric. That's true. Speaking of electric, there are actually four popular fireplaces these days. Like you said, this is an electric fireplace, and most people don't even realize they think it's just a gas fireplace. It's true. There's such a great feature now. They have This one here is built in, so you can hardly tell, but it still does heat up a room very nice. There is an electric fireplace. It's a wall hung, and that's great for a remodel scenario, um, and it's a great piece of art almost. And a nice feature about this fireplace is you can choose to have it put heat out or just have it on for looks. So in the summer, you could essentially run your fireplace. Which is great. And then the other three fireplaces that we were talking about, uh, one is a vent free, and um, that one is, is great for basements when we can't vent to the outside, and um, direct vent. Now tell me about that one. Direct vent is probably one of the more popular ones you see in homes today. It is vented to the outside. It's a gas fireplace. Uh, they have a lot of different looks. So they, depending on how much money you want to spend, you can get more of an authentic look. They have recently changed the code this year, so all of the direct vent fireplaces do have a built-in mesh screen, and that's really just to protect you from the heat. If a child was to go up, the glass is pretty hot, so it's more of a protection. And then my favorite is the traditional wood burning. It smells great. Um, it's a little bit more work, but it's a great feel in a home definitely is. Now, Kayla, there's a lot of things you can do to the front of your fireplace as far as decorating or sprucing it up. The fireplace is the focal point of the home. Tell me some of the things you've done. 
Well, uh, every designer at Granite Ridge will meet with the clients and talk about their needs for the fireplaces. We'll work with them on the types of mantles, the types of hearths. There's so many different options, as you can see, uh, modern, traditional. Um, the options are endless. I like what you did here. We've got a really sleek mantle and no hearth with this fireplace. Another thing about the electric fireplace I wanted to add is uh, homeowners right now we're seeing a surge of no fireplace in their home which is popular now if they choose someday to add a fireplace this is really easy because they can just hang one on the wall or maybe it's not in the budget right now they can always add one down the road very true now Kayla when it comes to fireplaces when you're staging your room, what are some popular ways to arrange your furniture around the fireplace? Well, I think that a very popular uh, style is still the wingback chair in front of fireplaces. Now, you say wingback chair. I've heard fireside chair. Can you describe what that is? Yeah, it's similar in, in style. The, the history about the wingback chair is um, in the 17th century, they were actually made of mostly wood. And they would um, have a tall back so that it would enclose the person and keep the draft out to make yourself a little bit warmer with that fire coming in and then in the 18th century they would add cushions and uh, the cushions were actually stuffed with horse hair to make it a little bit more comfortable interesting now these chairs are really pretty chairs I know they're from choice designs and they have a variety to choose from they do so you can go to choice designs and view a lot of different kinds of um, furniture options including wingback chairs on the showroom floor uh, which is choice designs off of Carroll Road or you can come here to the next step home and see these that we're sitting in Speaking of heating things up, I thought what we'd do in this segment is talk about the energy efficiency. A lot of people know that our next step, House of Technology, is known for its solar and how we can get a net zero home. But we had to start with a very efficient furnace. So Luke, would you kind of tell us what we started with on our furnace? Yeah, at the next step house here, we used a geothermal heating and cooling system. If you break down geothermal, geo means earth. Mm -hmm. Thermal means heat. So essentially, we're using the natural heat from the earth to heat and cool this house which gives us a few advantages. One, it's clean. Two, it's sustainable. And three, it's very energy efficient. And speaking of energy efficiency, the particular unit in this home is more than 500% efficient. Okay, I think our audience would like to do this. Let's compare that to the homes we normally build, which is gas line. Okay, so tell me this. What efficiency is your normal gas furnace? A typical new home today may range from around 90, 92%, but we have set a 96.2% furnace in all of our homes that's high efficient and very, very comfortable for the customer. And I heard you added something that most builders don't add to their furnace, and what's that? Got a lot of humidity in our area of the country, so we've put a dehumidification mode in all of our furnaces. In the summertime, it takes the humidity out of the air, which makes it very comfortable living. Okay, that's extremely important. It is. Okay, now let's get into some costs, because I know that's a big concern for a lot of our audience. First of all, what does it cost for a normal gas furnace that we put in today? A high efficient furnace is gonna range from seven or 8,000 to 10,000 dollars in a typical home, in comparison to geothermal systems, which range anywhere from 15 to 20,000 dollars. Okay, now, is there any tax breaks on that 15 to 20,000 hour geothermal? There are. Until 2016, there's an energy tax credit which allows the customer to take a 30% actual tax credit right off the cost of the system. That's pretty important. It is. How many homes would you say Grant Ridge builds on the geothermal system? Every year we plan and build from 30 to 50 homes using geothermal systems. Okay, so here's what that means, Luke. You guys can help them with their geothermal needs if they would like to help have it designed. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's get back to the next step house. You mentioned it, 500%, over 500% is efficient for right. the furnace, yeah. Right. Which means we have a little under 6,000 square feet here at this house, and for $450 total for the entire year, heating and cooling costs, that's all you're gonna that's have. That's amazing, But that's amazing. because we have the solar panels out back, it actually cost us nothing. And we'll talk more about solar panels next week. Okay, now I heard we have a geothermal connection with one of the, I guess, great universities, even though neither one of us graduated from there, which university has a connection to our geo? Ball State. Ball State just completed the nation's largest closed loop geothermal system. And obviously, it's a lot larger than the system we have here. A uh, few stats, they have 3,600 boreholes because now they we, actually went vertical wow. with their piping. We have one here and they have 3,600. Yeah, 3,600. Wow. 450 feet deep, which means if you stretched all those out, it would reach Florida, 1,000 miles. 
It's a lot of loop. It cost them $80 million to put that system in. And they replaced the system where they actually had four coal burner systems. They were actually shoveling coal oh into their furnaces oh to, to heat 47 <laughs> different buildings, 5.5 million square feet. How much does that oh. save them a year? $2 million a year. Wow. That is a bunch. Yeah. Speaking of Ball State, Tony, how'd they get their name? You know, it's a really interesting story. I just looked it up. Basically, there was five Ball Brothers, and they had a Ball Brother Corporation, and they were in upstate New York. And what they did was they found out that the Mason Glass Jar Company had lost their patent in 1880. Mm -hmm. They picked it up, and they started building glass fruit jars. Okay. Now, what they did in upstate New York, they found out that it takes a lot of energy to build a factory, and it needs a lot of energy to do the glass. So they looked around for some place in the earth, just like we're doing today, which is the heat in the earth from geo, they looked for earth that might have natural gas in it. They started out at Balls, or Bowling Green, they went to Finley, Ohio, they found out mm -hmm. that a nice little place called Muncie, Indiana had mm -hmm. a lot of it. So they decided to set their corporation up there. Since then, they've all built their mansions. They also built a Ball Memorial Hospital. My grandpa worked there. Oh, wow. A very philanthropic corporation. They are. To this day, they are still in operation. And what they get very interesting, they also have the largest recyclable hmm. aluminum can division in the world. And by the way, I'll give you a quiz. Do you know what made glass jars less profitable and when it stopped? What invention? I don't know. We talked about it last know. week, refrigerators. They didn't need it as much. Okay. So, speaking of the ball fruit jars, here's the new version of what they're doing with the ball fruit jars. This is what we call hillbilly wine drinking. Looks like it's empty to me. I'm gonna put some chocolate milk in mine. You know what, <laughs> let's go do this. Let's go over to the wine grotto here in the next step house and talk a little bit about the wine drinking. All right. Izzy, do you remember at the grand opening of the next step house when you spilled your red wine all over the carpet? I really don't remember that at all, no. But it was a very exciting evening, you know, and there was a lot to celebrate and I just, you know, I really think karma hasn't quite forgiven me for that. Have you got any good leads? Uh, well, you know, I think really we've got a lot of great potential for leads here. We're pretty much really hard. Oh! That was well, I had to clean it up. Do you know how I cleaned up your red wine? How'd you do that? I poured white wine over it and it came out. Oh, come on. You can't do that easy. So speaking of wine, Luke, I heard there's a shortage of corks. That's actually not true. Corks are very uh, sustainable. And they actually, do you guys know where a cork comes from? I have no idea. Yeah, it actually comes from the Mediterranean Sea area, especially Spain and Portugal. And it actually comes from an oak cork tree. And yes, it, they do even produce acorns like the oak trees around here. <laughs> And it comes from the bark of the tree. Every nine years, they actually just shear the tree. And it, they, when they shear it, it's about two inches thick, and they actually just go through, and they, they drill out the cork. And then what they don't use, they actually use in products like what you see around offices, cork boards, or like the floor you're standing on, which is made from cork itself. And there's a couple advantageous things with that floor. It's fire resistant. It creates a little bit of insulation. It's mold resistant, and it won't absorb water. So there are some advantages to using a cork floor throughout a house. Great show today, guys. Now, let's kick back and watch a movie. What do you want to watch? Action. A little romantic comedy. Yeah, like romancing the stone or something. <laughs> what? I know. How about Between the Studs? Oh, on YouTube. Yeah, hey. number 33. Seven Valentine's Day. Exactly. Yeah. Let's watch it. Nothing All wrong right. with a little throwback. Let's catch it. Well, Joe, what Tony would like for us to discuss is the Rural Housing Finance Program, mm -hmm. which is a terrific way of owning a new home today. It absolutely is, Lonnie. And Joe, as I understand it, you took advantage of yourself a few years ago. Well, that was quite a few years ago. My wife and I took advantage of this program 37 years ago, Lonnie. It's pretty amazing. And believe it or not, you can get into this home with no down payment, zero down, True. minimal closing costs. Well, maybe even zero dollars in closing costs. Even possibly no closing costs and monthly payments from about six fifty dollars per month. True. A lot cheaper than renting. It's a lot cheaper than renting. Why would you rent? I know it. And we're talking about a custom home that you're going to design and we're going to put your appointments in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And How much home I, can I get for this one? Well, up to 175000 or possibly even more depending on which program you qualify That's for. That's a lot of home. It's wonderful. It's exciting. Call Granite Ridge Builders. 490-1417-260 area code. Talk to one of our home specialists. They'll give you the information. Take your application. We're going to help you realize that dream. Absolutely. Enjoy Villa Living located southwest. Gray Oaks Villas offers the perfect maintenance-free lifestyle. 2815 Arden Cove is available for $289.9. Dues cover mowing, 
maintenance of your irrigation system, and snow removal. This home is three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and it's located on a pond lot with a sunroom, covered porch, granite countertops, and a stamped concrete patio. Granite Ridge Builders offers this four bedroom, two story home on a full basement at 5914 Hemingway Run. This home is listed for $269.9. It also offers a three car garage, ceramic tile shower, painted cabinets, and a vaulted ceiling in the great room. Visit one of our newest locations located northwest. Parker's Bay Villa offers snow removal and maintenance of your yard and mowing. This home located at 11186 DuPont Oaks Boulevard is available for $254.9. This villa home is a three car garage and offers a covered porch, fireplace, large Eden nook, endless pantry and ceramic tile shower. So we're standing in what we believe is the largest residential home in the Midwest that actually uses, utilizes solar as its main energy source. Holy cow. Speaking of solar, my last trip to the Indianapolis airport, I saw acres of solar panels out there. What was that all about? I think Tony knows something about it. You know, I do. Hey, Indianapolis has the largest airport-based solar farm in the country. Really? And it's on 75 acres. Now think about it. They have no place to put houses on there because you have the airplanes land, so they, they use that acreage. Yeah, sure. Yeah. How many solar panels do you think they have? No idea. We've got 40 here. You've okay. got 40 solar panels here compared to the largest 150. residential. 150. No, they actually have 88,000 solar panels wow. in that airport. Processes, innovations, energy technologies, uh, trims, et cetera, et cetera. Those things that characterize a new home. Thank you very much. I don't like that. I hit a, hit a, a bump. <laughs> <laughs> trims, trims. <laughs> trims, trim trims Kate. <laughs> Shoot, we're rolling. <laughs> operating, or a, uh, operating use as a, uh, yeah, it's going so good. <laughs> they could use it as a, a operating table. <laughs> Not an operating table, but yeah, oh yeah. a uh, working station. Yeah, yeah, working station. Man, I want to get that going down there. And it's still, it's still sitting there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could still, say it wasn't going good. all the way down until I pushed my hands in. <laughs> yeah. Like a hand and that thing going in. First time we're really going to break it. What? We're really going to break the garbage disposal. Speaking of that, why don't we do this? Let's go to the wine grotto over here at the next house. Step house. Let's go over to the step one. Do you have that step house one? <laughs> Speaking of ball glass fruit jars, today, well, today we've got this new way of doing things, and I'm going to start drinking one of these. Here's our latest. Here's, our, here's, here's, the, here's, our latest. here's, here's the new improvement. Speaking of ball glass jars. It's not as easy latest. as you guys think yeah, to say this. I'm serious. Because I'm worried about hey, what. Don't slip. You don't want to be on the bloopers. <laughs> no, I don't want to be on the bloopers. Don't slip. I don't see any wine in it yet. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of curious what was going on. That was beautiful. Oh, I guess I didn't need to have a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> now you need me to pour this on it. I mean, it might look weird to show that massive spill and then cut away to this tiny <laughs> spill. <laughs> Guys, I thought that was a great show. I did. Yeah. Right, no. Well, you, you, you started to cover me. All right, let's start again. Start again. Start again. Okay, you know what? I'm sorry. Ronnie, you know, just a little bit. Just let's go sit down. That's what he's going to say. Sit down close. Yeah, you know, get what he can say. Okay, now you stay there. You're good. Okay. Okay. Just, you just, yeah, watch where you're at. Watch. You tell when you're right. Oh, right. I don't want to say that. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving Lonnie a wedgie over here. Hold on a second. Excuse me.